said, why don't we get started in an easy, comfortable seat, and we'll start easing our shoulders into a nice big shoulder opener to come. So finding a nice gentle length in the spine, softness in the low back. I'll say it every time I have you start in an easy seat. Don't force up in the low back. Soft low back. And I should say, if easy seat is ever uneasy for your knees, legs can come out, that's just fine. Most importantly, we're looking for a relaxed upper body, a relaxed face. We're taking our scan through the body. Looking for anything that needs to be turned off. A muscle we didn't even realize we grip. And then we start to shift from the external to trying to tune out any noise around you, any sore spots in the body. Going internal. Setting your focus on either the breath or an intention, like a word, a phrase, even a sound you make in your own head. Clearing out all other thoughts unrelated to the intention or the breath. Actively disconnecting from all other thoughts. Fill up your biggest inhale of this Sunday so far. Sigh out, exhale, let go of something. And give your shoulders just a couple rolls here. Your eyes can remain closed. Your shoulders could go just backward. They could go forward as well. Maybe one at a time. And then what I want you to do is take your right hand and bring it to your low back. So I'm going to turn around so you can see. My right hand is on the top of my left hip. And that's a great place for it to be, especially here in the beginning. You should feel some opening in the front of the right shoulder. You could take your left hand, give a little tug to your fingers, and sort of bring pinky edge into your left hip crease, maybe. If that's too intense, on the back of that left hip bone is just fine so long as you feel opening here in the front. Let's inhale some length into the spine. And to enhance this stretch, I'm just going to gently set my left ear toward my left shoulder. So I'm waking up not just the front of my right, but also the top part, sort of the trapezius muscle here. Big inhales, big spine lifting, exhale, inhales. Head clearing exhale. And then we'll release our hand. We'll let our chin fall across our chest. Just a couple half circles. 
And then if you want, you could set right ear off to right shoulder before you even go into this left shoulder stretch. So a hand behind the back, maybe grabbing hand right away, kind of nestling that pinky edge now into the right hip crease, or maybe just setting the back of the hand on top of the right hip. And inhaling that length into the spine. And exhaling, finding opening in both the top and the front of the shoulder. Sometimes I tell you that our shoulders and our throat is where our fifth chakra lives, and that's our point of communication. Sorry, it's a little bit loud in here this morning. And then we'll release our hand. We'll take our chin across, getting those little half circles. Maybe working our way up to some full circles. If you want to stick with half, by all means. If you're taking folds, reverse the direction because we're not going to be here much longer. Uh, inhale the head up tall. Exhale, come to hands and knees, tabletop. Spread through the fingers. So we've got some nice open shoulders, but we've mostly been concentrating on the front. So let's inhale, lift up our cow. Exhale, arc our cat. And I want you to really spend time with the exhale. Of course, our breaths are even matching each other. But on the exhale, I want you to think about arcing up, putting lots of space behind your shoulder. Really spreading through thumb and index. Inhales, lifting. Exhale, that big rounding. Lots of space. back to neutral fingers spread we're going to come now into our hair or our rabbit pose very big so very top of the head to the mat your forehead is facing your knees you can see your knees and you're going to walk your knees into your forehead until you feel space behind the neck here's why i wanted you to really concentrate on those cat poses so we're going to reach back we're going to put lots of space between our shoulder blades so here's what I tell my students. Some people don't grab onto their hands or onto their ankles. Some of them just rest their hands on the mat. And if that stretch works for you by all means. I like to grab onto whatever is accessible. For me, that offers a bigger stretch behind the shoulder blade. But the thing is, the more you reach back, the more your seat wants to fall down towards child's pose. We want our seat stacked over our knees to get the big stretch. So make sure you're lifting seat, even if that means you're bringing your hands a little closer or even dropping them onto the mat. And then if you're more on your forehead, you're not going to feel it in the back of the neck. So really make sure you're on the top of the head. Take your hands to the mat, press up, inhale, look up your cow, exhale, arc your cat. Spread through your hands, give your toes a curl under. We're going to counter that big shoulder opener by coming into a downward facing dog and giving our chest a little press towards our legs. We'll head back to the fronts of the shoulders later. Right now, this will serve as our counter. Pressing heels towards the mat, settling in through thumb and index fingers, spreading fingers wide. All right. Let's 
lower our hips and pull into a high plank. So as you can see, I'm walking my hands up. So my down dog wasn't quite as long as I would have wanted it to be. My wrists are now stacked right under my shoulders. I'm going to inhale, bring my seat back up. Now I know my down dog is exactly where I want it. I'm going to give my chest another little press towards my leg, really sort of undoing that hair pose. Exhale, find your high plank one more time. Get a nice stack of shoulders over wrists, really spread through thumb and index. Little softness in elbows. Let's lower to the belly. Give the toes an uncurl, press through the tops of the feet, and inhale up your cobra. No help from the hands. Hands down, toes curl. Give the seat a lift, and take your little pedal. Step to the front. Inhale, come up half. Exhale, dive. And we haven't come up to standing yet, so hang out in your fold, and then take a nice slow roll up to standing. One vertebra sort of clicking into place at a time. Head coming up west. We're finding our Tadasana Mountain Pose. Give your shoulders a strike back, lift up your chest, and let's continue our flows. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, big hinge. Inhale, come up half, flatten the back. Hands to mat, high plank. This time I'm going to come just halfway to Chaturanga, but you're free to come all the way down if that's your preferred. Tops of feet press in. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Give toes a curl, downward facing. Press your heels towards the mat. Big inhale, exhale to the top. Inhale, half lift, exhale, dive. Now we can inhale, sweep our hands all the way up. Exhale, open the heart with a back bend. Inhale, center, exhale, hand. Half lift, high plank. You could even jump back if it's within your practice. Lower all or half. Inhale your back bend. Meet in downward facing. Inhale, fill. Exhale to the top. Half lift. Take a dive. And inhale, sweeps hands up, seat back, chair pose. Take some time with your chair pose set up. Weights and heels, chest is lifted, seats back, shoulders relax. When I say shoulders relax, just softening the top, no tension. Left hand's going to come forward, right fingers are going to sweep back. Core is engaged, don't let left, left, left knee peek in front of right, knees are in a line. And look back at right fingers to wake the neck to continue waking. We already did in the beginning. Inhale, right fingers forward. Exhale, left back. Core is engaged. Don't let right knee peak. It's always the opposite knee that wants to creep in front of the other. Engage the core. Open the back. Inhale, left forward. Both hands overhead. Sink deep, deep, deep into your chair. Soften the tops of your shoulders. Big inhale, exhale, fold. Come up half, hot plank, lower, inhale, up dog or cobra, downward facing. All right, pedal it out, open up the back, take the right foot, bring it between the hands. So you're just stepping to the front, maybe using the right hand to help. And see how I have my knee stacked on top of my ankle and my left heel is lifted. I'm going to sweep my hands overhead, find a crescent lunge. Shoulders are soft, knee stacked on top of ankle. And both of my legs are holding about 50% of the weight. So what I'm going to do, left hand forward, right fingers back. I love this twist. It's really challenging to the balance. The core is engaged. 
We'll inhale, right fingers forward. We'll take left back like we're stringing a bow, and we'll pop our left foot into warrior two position. We'll press through pinky edge. If this hurts your knee, you can always give your toes the slightest angle towards the front of the mat. Knee stacked, right knee open. Long, strong, hip opening, warrior two. All right, take left heel, bring it under your left knee. Horse or goddess squat. Get your knees stacked over your ankles, really open hips. I'm going to take my hands to my hips, sink a little deeper. Take your hands up like cactuses. Big inhale. Hands to the hips, lift up. Send your toes to the front. Inhale, lift up your chest, open up your heart. Exhale, take a dive. Just a straddle stretch. Knees are nice and soft, heads hanging. Maybe a little sway here. With your left hand in the center, I want you to inhale, sweep your right fingers up. A twist, exhale your right fingers down. Inhale, your left fingers up. Exhale, them down. One more each side. Connect breath to this flow. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Take a little walk over to your right foot. How does that feel in the back of the right leg? Sink into your right knee. So your left toes are going to pop, you're on your left heel. This little surfer stretch, keep a little softness in your left knee. I have my hands on the mat. You're more than welcome to keep your hands on the mat. So you could take your hands to the heart. If the stability is there, how does this feel on the back of your left leg? If you want to get really crazy, we've been playing with shoulder openers. Left hand could come to the low back. Here you are in a half bind, just like we were at the beginning. My right hand is in a half prayer. Though I could snake it behind my right leg. Catch my left fingers. Get a pretty intense front shoulder opener. Your cough. If you're like, no bind, maybe you're hanging out right here and just focusing on the stretch. That's okay. If you are in the bind, you're really trying to open up your left shoulder. All right. I've had you here for a while. Take your hands to the mat. Lift your seat up. Back to the big straddle stretch. I want you to hang out and neutralize for a beat. Take your hands to the hips. Inhale up half. Exhale, big hinge. Let the arms hang. Find release in your low back. And then take a little walk to the left. So how does that feel? I want you to sink into left. And my right toes pop. I'm on my right heel. I didn't tell you this before, and maybe you can see it in the video. On my left side, my left heel comes up. That's okay if that happens. Your foot doesn't have to be perfectly on the mat. Our bodies are going to be different from side to side. Hands to mat, to heart. Maybe right hand behind the half bind. Maybe left hand behind the full bind. Keep a little softness in your knee. Don't hyperextend whatever you do. If you're taking full bind, you're sort of peeling your right shoulder back and finding lots of space in the front of the shoulder. Take a moment here for a couple big breaths. If you've got any sort of bind, break it. Take your hands down. Maybe your hands were already done. Come back up. Your nice big straddle. Very neutralized. If you wanted to take hands to hips, find a half lift. Put some length in your spine so you could take a bigger hinge by all means. 
You can take your hands to your ankles. You can hang out. You could walk your hands through. Sometimes I give you the option of playing with taking the top of your head to the mat. And that could be it. Or you could spread through your fingers and make a tripod, that equilateral triangle. Pressing through thumb and index, you could play with bringing one knee on top of one elbow. Maybe both knees. Or maybe you're just hanging out in the straddle stretch. Everyone's different so long as you are comfortable and you feel safe. Take your hands to your hips. Inhale, come up half. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, come up all the way. Take your left toes, bring them to the new front of your mat. Find warrior two. We're getting out of this the way we came into it, but on the opposite side, all things equal, right? So I'm pressing through pinky edge of my right foot, opening left knee, staying for just a couple breaths, strongly rooted to the mat, a grounding pose. Inhale, fill. Ready to challenge balance. Right heel picks up. Right toes spin to your new front of the mat. Remember our crescent lunge. Sink deep, deep, deep. Make sure both legs are doing 50% knee stack. Ready to open up with our twist. Engage the core. Right hand forward. Left fingers back. Keep the core engaged. Take a look back at your left fingers. Inhale your left hand forward. Hands come overhead. Sink deep. We're truly going to reverse this. So you're going to inhale, fill. Exhale, frame. Step back. Land in downward facing dog. Pedal. Press through thumb and index. Lower your hips. High plank. Look at that. I wasn't quite long enough. Inhale, hips up, downward facing. Exhale, high plank. Let's get a little flow going here. Connect breaths to movement. <sighs> Inhales, lifting you up. What can you let go of when you exhale to high plank? Last one. Inhale, up. Exhale, high plank. Inhale, here. Exhale, lower all or half. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Downward facing. Let's drop our knees. Uncurl our toes. And take a child's pose. Reach the fingers, you know, knees together or knees apart. Take the palms together and bring your hands over the top of the back of your head. How does that feel on the shoulders? Use this as an opportunity to bring your focus to breath or the intention that you set. Take your hands to the mat. Inhale up to a table. Give your toes a curl under, downward facing. Inhale, fill. Exhale to the top. Half lift. Take your dive. And inhale right up to your chair. Seat back, hands up. Shoulders soft. Weight in heels, core engaged. Pick up right heel. Shifting weight to the left foot. You know I like those anchors and the heel and ball. There's actually a banda or a lock there. So that way you can turn off your foot and your toes. Right foot crosses over. So your options are kickstanding. Great place to build strength. I would always recommend kickstanding. Floating the toes off the mat. Someday those toes might wrap around your calf, but that day doesn't have to be today. Right elbow comes on top of left, 
palms come together. If that doesn't work for your body, back the hands together or palms on shoulders. And I'm going to actually uncross and I'm going to come down to this kickstand. I truly love it. We're going to inhale, lift our elbows in line with our shoulders. And that's going to give us the same opening that we found in that hare or rabbit pose. Lots of space between your shoulder blades. Does it matter? What hand variation you're holding, if you're lifting your elbows, inhaling them in line with your shoulders, you're going to make that space behind your blades. Okay, are you ready for a little bit of a challenge? I'm going to have you uncross your right leg, toes down, get nice and stable on the left, refine it. Send your right toes back. Left knee soft. Left foot soft. Connected heel and ball. See how I'm holding my eagle arms? Warrior three with eagle arm variation. It's not easy. Set your right toes back. Oh, land in crescent lunge. We've been here before. Inhale your elbows up. Make lots of space behind your shoulder blades. Inhale, fill. Exhale, unwind. Bring your hands overhead. Soften. Inhale, fill. Exhale, frame. And step back to downward facing dog. When you move up on my mat, I'm going to take a couple petals. All right, inhale, fill. Exhale to the top. Come up half. Take it up. And the inhale is going to send seat back, hands up, and we're going to land in our chair. Weight, of course, in heels, tops of shoulders relaxing. Left heel lifts so we can shift the weight to the right. That's step one. Find the grounding or the banda, the lock in the heel and the ball of the foot. Left foot walks over. Okay. Are you kickstanding, floating, or wrapping? Sink deep into your right leg. Left over right. Are you going palms together, bags of hands together, or palms on shoulders? You're inhaling lift, putting space in the backs of your shoulder blades. Core is engaged, you're focused on breath. All right, ready to unwrap left. You might have to set foot down, make sure you're truly grounded in right, and then you're stepping it back slowly like you're moving it through mud. Core is engaged, we're keeping these uh, Eagle arms in our warrior three. Trying to put lots of length in our spine. Stay soft in our knee. Ooh, it's not easy. Left foot goes back. Land on the ball. Heel lifted. Crescent lunge. Inhale your elbows up. So much space in your shoulder blades. Inhale, fill. Unwind. Frame, step back, downward facing dog. Come in for some pedals. Set your knees down. No. Uncurl your toes and find that grounding child's pose. Focusing on breath. I don't know about you, but balance poses kind of take my breath away. So we're going to reconnect with breath here.
One more inhale. Exhale, table. All right. No fancy setup. We're just going to come to our bellies, shifting our legs back. We're going to take hands overhead to begin, chin or forehead down. So I'm going to bend into my left, and I'm going to use my right hand to catch the top of my left foot. We're going to take two half bows, and I like half bow because it's a little bit more accessible than the full thing. It kind of gives you time to open up your quad and figure out what works for your knee and your low back. So chin or forehead down the neck, you're catching your top of your left foot. We're exhaling. And then on the inhale, I just simply want you to kick into your hand. Have that lift up your chest. Your left hand can be anchored to the mat. Or you can play with floating it. How does this pose feel on the low back? How does it feel on the knee? You choose how much you want to inhale up. Go easy on your body. We're still warming up. With the inhale, fill up, big lift, fullest expression, exhale, lower. Keep your left knee bent, make a pillow with your hand, bend your right, windshield wiper. Take your legs on in the mat. We've spent so much time with the backs of our shoulders. Let's head back to the front. Take the right hand out long. See how my fingers are in line with my shoulder? I'm going to take my right cheek to the mat, and I'm going to roll. So my left hand could be anchored in front of my body. It could come to my low back, a half spine. Or I could reach for right fingers. And even if those fingers don't touch, they don't interlace, just the reach back could feel really good. But of course, you're finding the position that works best for your body. You're taking a couple big inhales. And you're exhaling to open the shoulders and soften into the pose. Come to the belly. Arms overhead. All right. Chin or forehead down. We're bending into right. We're using the left hand now to catch the top of the right foot. This is the half bow. You don't even have to come up any more, any higher than this. If this is enough quad stretch, your knees at its edge, and you feel good by all means. But you could exhale. Inhale, little kick. That will put compression in your low back, and it'll be more intense in your right leg. So maybe this is where you stay. You're like, this is what feels good for my body. Or maybe you inhale up. Bringing right hand off the mat, putting a little deeper bend in the low back. Listen to your body. Inhale, lifting. Exhale. Releasing tension, clearing head. Last inhale, biggest expression yet. Lower. Make the pillow with your hand. Bend your left knee to meet your right. Windshield wiper both legs to release the low back. And then take your feet down. Left finger in reach. In line with left shoulder, palm down. We're rolling. Left temple down. So you can see here now my right hand in front of me. A great option for stability. And I should say this right leg, I choose to bend mine and plant my foot, but I see plenty of people just drop right leg on left. It's always about your body. Right hand could find half bind at the low back, or you could reach for your left fingers. A 
a moment to breathe. And just let the front of the shoulders relax open. Exhale back to the belly. I always give you two options here. If you tried those half bows and you say, you know what? Those half bows did not feel good in my knees or they brought my knees right to the edge. I don't think I can do a full. Then you can come to a locus. Hands by your side, chin up or head down. When I tell you to inhale lift, you'll come up like this, leaving, bringing everything up but your hip bones and maybe your navel. Now, if you tried the half and you said, I'm interested in the flow, that looks like bending your knees and catching the tops of your feet. We're all going to come into it the same. That means we exhale. Inhale, come up. So if you're coming into a full bow, you're kicking into your hands, feeling a little stretch in your quads. Maybe the inhales are letting you rock on your navel and your hip bones. If you said, no, I've opted for a locus, it would, it's what feels good for me. You're drawing your heels and your shoulder blades together. No wrong answer. So long as the inhales are giving you strength to reach your fullest expression of this pose. And your exhales are giving you release and length. One more big inhale. We've got this. Exhale, lower. Keep the knees bent or bend them if you're in motion. Windshield wiper. Legs long. Palms underneath. You know, after those big arcing back bends, I love a good child. Ease into it. Don't shock your back. Forehead down, making connection with the mat, focus on breath. Clearing thoughts and finding the present moment here in your child's pose. Inhale up out of your child into your table. So you know I'm all about options. I'm all about making yoga accessible. If you prefer to take your pigeons reclined and on your back, I'm going to ask you to come to your back now. And I will demo. But first, I'm going to demo the pigeon that I will um, be guiding you through. So, toes curl under, feet lifted up, back to downward facing. Just a couple of paddles, and we're going to take right knee, and we're going to drop it behind right wrist. And left knee is going to come down. I'm going to keep my foot active until I get my heel in place, kind of directly behind my hip. Then I'll take top of foot down. All right, I'm going to turn and face. Because I always like to say, if you have options, heel could be a little bit closer to the left hip, or a little bit more parallel to the front of your mat. Now, if your shin is right in front of you, you're going to want to put a little flex in your foot. Keep things nice and safe. And then you're going to fold. And as you fold, you're going to shift a little weight to the left. Evenly distribute the weight between your hips. Now, if you're in this 
variation of pigeon and you say, whoa, not for my knees, not for my hips, that's when you're going to take it to the back and go reclined in the figure four. So I don't want you doing that at home. If you're holding the figure four, you're relaxing your shoulders and your face. But if you're folded over your right leg, you're doing the same thing. We have this tendency to want to lift up in our shoulders. We really want to soften them. Maybe make a little pillow with our hands. Make sure we've got that good, even distribution of the weight between the hips. And then we're just breathing. A pretty intense hip opener. A little bit of sweet discomfort, or maybe a lot of bit of sweet discomfort is okay. Pain or pinching is not. That's why I give you the option to come to your back. Once you're in that place of, ooh, this is a deep stretch, I actually want you to try and tune it out. I want you to concentrate more on focusing your breath. About 50% of our flexibilities in our nervous system, it's our own selves holding us back. Of course, a lot of it's in our muscles and, and all the other parts of our body. We truly have to teach ourselves, it's okay to let go when I found my edge, it's okay to relax into it. I'm safe, I'm set up properly, now I'm just going to breathe and relax. start heading back to your palms. If you're on your back, you're exhaling your left foot to the mat. <clears throat> We're going to come up into a child's pose or into a downward facing dog, unless of course you're on your back and your windshield wipering. If you're in downward facing, you're paddling. And what I actually like to do here is pick up my right toes and open up my right hip, sort of just sending my foot over to the left. A little counter. Toes come back up. Foot sets down. Couple pedals. So if you're on your back, your left ankle is coming to your right knee. If you're going to take this from uh, downward facing again, left knee dropping behind left wrist. Right knee is down. Take a look back, keeping the foot active, heels nice and in line, my leg directly behind me. I uncurl, set the top of my foot down. And I'm going to kind of shift around here, find nice even distribution. On my left side, my heel stays much closer to my body, and that's okay. I'm going to rock down, ease into this pose. Each hip is holding about 50% of the weight. Then I'll work on relaxing my shoulders. And I like to do a little check-in. So this is my tighter hip. Maybe for you it's your looser hip. That doesn't matter so much as what you learn about your body. My left side's tighter, my right side's tighter. Once you have that body awareness, we start to tune it out. We're inhaling, saying body, relax. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to practice clearing the thoughts from my head. I'm going to almost treat this pose like a bit of a savasana. Completely soft and relaxed.
Just two more rounds of breath, all the focus on the inhales and exhales. you up, or exhale, put your right foot on the mat if you're on your back. Right toes curl under, a final downward facing, unless you're on your back, then your windshield light brain. Ooh. My knee's just a little stiff, but I'm going to paddle it out. Inhale, my left toes up like you did on the opposite side. Take that inside hip opener. Now, if you took pigeon on your back, hang out there because the down dogs are coming to meet you. We're going to lift our toes up, set our toes to the mat, come in through a table, and just head to the back. So we're all going to come on to our back. And I like to hang out here for just a beat. Regardless of what hip opener or what pigeon variation you took, it might feel nice to just feel your low back open up against the mat. I'm going to take my palms down, my knees side to side. A little wake up in the low back. You can do the same. All right. Let's invert. So inversion of your choosing. Your legs are going to come up. For some of us, we might stop right here in this legs up again, uh, legs again, legs up the wall. If you wanted to, you could come to an actual wall if you have one nearby, or you could hold. Now, shoulder stands within your practice. You could use a little bit of core to lift up your hips and catch your low back. Now I'm moving my head. I'm going to advise you strongly not to move your head if you're in shoulder stand. Just be looking right up at your toes. Court is engaged. And we're walking our elbows together, drawing our shoulder blades together. If you try it and you decide it's not for you, legs up against the wall. Same benefit. Just this idea of being upside down. Changing our perspective. And sometimes a little change of perspective can be a really good thing. Now, if you are in shoulder and you do want to play with taking your toes behind the head for a plow by all means, I always give the example that my back is stiff in the morning. So right now, my toes aren't going to touch the mat. Well, a little bit. But I can modify by bending my knee and resting my knees towards my forehead. Same great back stretch, a little bit more accessible. If your legs up the wall, you're just keeping your knees soft, your focus on breath. If you're in plow, you're working on keeping your spine a little bit lifted. Let's inhale, bring our legs back overhead if you were in plow. Come up to a shoulder stand. And from here, we can all collectively lower. Tucking our knees into our chest, whether you're in legs up the wall or shoulder stand, a little squeeze and rock. Draw your forehead up to your knees, big squeeze. Extend your legs long on the mat. Palms down. Either seated on the backs of the hands or having hands very near the seat. We'll inhale up to our elbows. We'll walk our elbows together, draw our shoulder blades together, open our heart, and reach the crown towards the mat. Fish pose, our last shoulder opener. Really walk everything together. Big arc across the chest. Crown reaches towards the mat. Take a look ahead. Come down off your elbows. Bend into your knees. Plant your soles. 
and allow your back to be neutral against the mat. Take a couple of those windshield wipers. I'm going to switch up the counter pose for the legs up the wall, folks. I'm going to take your soles together. We're all going to do this, but this is the counter pose if you stayed in legs up the wall. Supta Konasana, reclined butterfly. Big arc and low back. How does it feel? Big opening in inside the hips. You can always walk heels away to sort of ease into this pose. Right hand to belly, left over heart. Just allowing the breaths to rise and fall. Making a physical and mental connection with the breath. your hands to wherever you can find on your legs and guide your knees together so you're closing a book. Taking all that arc out of the low back, noticing how that changes things, draw knees into your chest, exhale, hug and squeeze, take a little breath. Drop your knees to the right, both shoulders stay on the mat, ending twist. I like to reach my fingers in line with my shoulders. Your left knee could be rested on your right, or you could cross right leg, or I should say left leg over right for a deeper twist, your call. And you know, facing the ceiling for a neutral neck, or looking left for a deeper neck stretch. Head center. If your legs were crossed, uncrossed, we'll collectively tuck knees into chest. Exhale that back opening, squeeze. Get a nice little rock. And then a set of the knees to the left. Shoulders remain. Maybe you reach your fingertips, maybe right crosses over left. Facing ceiling or looking right. Do what feels good in your neck. Inhale, brings head center, legs unwind, knees tuck into chest, exhaling one more, squeeze, a little rock. Inhale, fill. Exhale, squeeze, draw your forehead up to you. Or just do a ball, or maybe even an A, you could say, huh? And exhale, one more time, finding your big open savasana. 
So taking time for a full body scan, making sure everything is turned off. Just like in the beginning, for me, I notice I'm gripping my hips and my ankles. Really tap into those places. Give them one last little squeeze and then melt, let them melt away. The face completely slack. The breath becomes a steady rise and fall. Inhale, fill up. Sigh out. Inhale, fill. Open and close the hands. Roll the ankles. Stretch the toes. Take a look right, a look left. Whole body awake. Fingers overhead. Big, big stretch. Oh, you've got a whole nice weather day ahead of you. Roll to the right. Pause. Thank your body for the hard work it put in. And press up. Easy seat. Yogis, as always, thank you for sharing your practice and your presence. Namaste.